As we continue to talk about how to report data results, I want to keep talking about some of those different guidelines for creating good and effective graphics and how we can use different elements and features of ggplot to do that. The next one I wanted to talk about is how to highlight interesting aspects on your plot. So you can always consider adding elements that show noteworthy elements of your data or that indicate to the user pieces that they might not, not, not otherwise see. So I've got an example here. This is using this number of deaths during uh, July of 1995 in Chicago during the extreme heat wave. And on the left, I haven't highlighted interesting aspects. On the right, from the data, I've, I've pulled out the dates of that heat wave and I've identified them with this red bar. So that's highlighting the period based on something else in the data that really had the severe heat. The other thing that you might wanna do is label outliers within the data that you're plotting itself. So this is an example from the World Cup data where I'm showing passes versus shots for each of the players. On the left, I haven't highlighted the points, but you can see we have some outliers. We have some cases where a player either had an extraordinarily high number of shots or a really high number of passes. And those might be cases where we want to pick out exactly who the player was. Here on the right, I've added those with labels so we can see the name of the player and the team they were playing on. One of the useful ways for doing this highlighting is to use GM text. This will actually let you add text to, to the figure. So I wanna use an example where we're gonna add this on for um, a plot showing the mortality versus the the um, the number excuse me the time versus the number of deaths for that Chicago data set. So in the very first video in this chapter, I showed some example data and how you can set it up. So make sure that if you want to follow along with the code, you set that up so that you have the chic July ready to go. And I can actually take out this is from an earlier video lecture, so we can take out that particular plot. So we're going to be using the Schick July in this case, and we can take a look to make sure that looks like it's set up well. So let's just look at the beginning of it. And what we'll be using here are the date, and then we'll also be using the number of dots right here. So let's do a scatter plot of those two pieces to start, and we'll use ggplot where our data is Schick July. And then for the aesthetics, we'll map the X aesthetic to the date and the Y aesthetic will map to death. The last thing we need is our GM, the actual thing that goes on the plot. So we can do GM point for that. And then let's just check. So that's giving us this time series where we go on the X axis and look at date. And then on each of those dates on the Y axis, it's giving us the number of deaths. Now, we might want to highlight the day that had the highest temperature in that period and show that with our points. One thing we can do is we can create a separate data frame. So I'll call this hottest day. And for creating this, we're probably going to need to think back to what we've learned about how to work with our data sets using a dplyr function. So let's take the Schick July. And then we're, we'll filter through, and we want to pick out the row where temp, that's temperature, is equal to the maximum value of temperature across any of those. So let's look at this first before we assign it. That's pulling out, a, that's pulling out for us one row. It's on July 13th, where we have a temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. So we can assign this now, and now we have this hottest day. It's a very small data frame, just one, but it has the information we need, like the date and the number of deaths to be able to label that. Now we can add this as a label in our ggplot. So far in ggplot, we've only used a single data frame at a time, but we can actually add layers that are drawing data from different data frames. It's often helpful in that case if those different data frames have um, at least some columns with the same thing, so that if you're mapping your X aesthetic to the date, you have that date on the other data frame you want to bring into. So let's add in this case, let's do geom text to add that. You can use geom label as well, and I'll show that in just a second. The difference tends to be whether or not it has a background behind the text that you show. So in this case, we're, we need to specify what data. 
The data we put in our ggplot, that will be the default for any element that we add. But in this case, we actually, we don't want to add that for every single point that we have. We only want to add it for the point that's the maximum. So we'll say hottest day. And then let's take a look. Let's do, um, for the aesthetic, we'll let this x and y filter down. This should still be the default here. So we shouldn't need to set that, but let's set that the label, what actually goes on that, equals temp. All right, so you can see here it's added that label. It was 33 and a third, I guess. So we've got something that's kind of long and ungainly. Um, that's not right. Maybe that's what we want to use, but maybe instead we want to use some constant value for this label to indicate it, that it's the maximum temperature. We can do that, but in that case, we're not mapping to something that's in the data frame. Instead, we'll want to set it as a constant. So we could set that aesthetic as constant by taking that label call outside of the AES statement. All right, so now you can see that it's showing right here. And maybe we want to change the color of something so it shows up better. Let's make all of the points red. All right, and now we can see max is right here. So it's labeled just that point. Before I go on, let me show what would happen if we use the same data frame we've been using up to that point. So if we take out this, where it's specifying that it should draw on a different data set for adding this particular GM, this particular layer of the plot. If we take that out, we're going to get that annotation on every single point, which is probably not what we want in this case. All right, so let's get back to what we just had. And then the other thing that might be tricky here is that this point is right on top. This label is right on top of our point. So we might want to move it around a little bit. Geom text and geom label both have this V adjust and H adjust. So those stand for a V adjustment and an H adjustment. Let's do H just, let's try H just is negative one, and then V just is zero. Let's see if we like that. So that's moved it maybe a little bit too much, so we could go back and use smaller numbers for that. So right now it's put it kind of a little bit um, up and to the right of our original point, which might be helpful. Later we'll use a package called GG Highlight that's really helpful for letting us label different outliers. And then there's also something called geom repel that will actually let us label lots of points and do it in a way that it puts the labels a little bit away from the point so you can still see the points and adds lines if it needs to to connect a label to a point. So we'll work with those later in the class. But for right now, I want you to have this idea that you can move these text labels around a little bit um, from the, the main point they're plotting with the H just and V just. All right, so I've got some slides here that are walking you through what I just showed as an example in ggplot. Here's an example again of adding that label without kind of moving it around. In this case, one other thing that I've done is I've used the size. I've set that to a larger constant aesthetic so that the label itself, the font, is a little bit larger than the default. And then here's the example of playing around some with the H adjustment and the V adjustment. You can also use lines to highlight your data. So we had this example of doing that again with the Chicago data where a line is added for certain dates to really kind of show that those are the dates of the heat wave. In this case, I'm really I'm basing it on some outside information about what those dates were, but you could do the same kind of trick we did before of trying to pick that out based on that temperature column that's in the data. So in this case, again, we're going to use a second data set to give us the data we want to create that, that geo. So you'll want to make sure that you have Bluebird date added for this because I'm using the YMD here. Since we've got a date class for the time, we want to make sure it's in the same format. So let's go up and add that with our other packages. And then we'll take this out for right now. And we'll do a new, a new data frame called HeatWave. I think in a text I use the base our function data.frame, but we can use a tibble for that. That's a more uh, kind of tidy verse way to do this. And we can say that the date equals 
And we'll do this a vector of just two points. The dates that, that we know, maybe from outside information, for example, are the start and end date of the heat wave. So we'll do YMD for setting both of those. And then I just need to put the date inside that. And let me double check the dates we have. So it's July 12th of 1995 to July 16th. So we can put both of those in. And this will end up being our first column in a very little data frame. And then the second thing that I want to put in here. Oh, wait, I think I... Don't have my parentheses quite right. There we go, that looks right. The other thing that we want to put in is where we want this to fall on the y-axis. We know we'll be mapping to depth, so this is a little bit of a hacky way to do it, but we can kind of look at our plot before and see that the maximum's up somewhere around maybe four 25 or so, maybe a little less than that. So I think if we set that to 425, that'll let us put our line up above the rest of what we're seeing. So we'll set that death equals C 425, 425. So let's take a look now at this heat wave. And you can see it's just a very small data frame where we've got those two dates for the start and end. And then we've got a value for the y-axis that's high enough that'll set it above the rest of our points. So now we can create that, that scatter plot again. This is the shake July. And then we've got that our aesthetics, our X is the date, and Y is the depth. And then we had our points, and we set those to be red. All right, that looks right. So now let's add the geom. And this is going to be going across, so it's H line. Excuse me, we're actually going to use line for the where we have both points. We have the 425. So again, we need to specify the data within this geome because we want to use a different data set that we created that's got some of the same columns but is calling from a different data set. So I'll do data equals heat wave. And then I'll do the aesthetical mappings. And in this case, actually, we might not need it because it's just the X and the Y that we're bringing down. So let's take a look at this. All right, you can see it's added the line right up here. Um, and again, it's doing these start dates of July 12th and then the end date of July 16th. And then it's up at 425 for the Y position. We might want to change some of the constants here. So we could try doing, for example, that the size equals 3. And now it's in a thicker line there. 